Hi guys, I'm back to show you a video all about Tim Holtz Rickety House and I also used in this um, experience um, the On The Fence On The Edge die. So this is your um, Rickety House. It's, it's about, the picture is about 75% of the actual size of the die. It is so much fun to play with. I know a lot of people use this for Halloween, but we don't actually celebrate Halloween over in this side of the world very often. So we, we can't use it that way. And I mean, I do because I have family in America and um, a grandson there who's, I celebrated his first Halloween when he was only just a few weeks old. He dressed up as a bat. He was cute. Um, but over here, we've got so many uses for this shape. It's so much fun. Some of the things you can use it for. Um, you can do autumn, summer, winter, spring houses. You can do a just married house. Uh, you could put it in any layout that's about home and family. I use it in children's scenes in my mini books. It can be made into a diner, it can be made into a mountain cabin, it can be made into a beach house. Here in the North Island of New Zealand we call them batches, but in the South Island of New Zealand they call them cribs. It make, and that's what I'll be making later on and showing you um, probably through a fast forward segment. So lots of fun to be had with that die. The on the edge dies. A lot of people are puzzled about these on the edge dies, but really all you've got to think about them as is a, they're a punch. But they're a punch that you use through your machine, and it has they can it can cut cut much more than just card, and um, several at a time. So you can get really put really thick um, media card paper chipboard through it so you're getting the opportunity of using a punch on some really heavy weight interesting um, mediums so that's the dies let me show you what I do with them here's just um, a couple of examples these ones are Christmas ones you might have seen them in the gallery at Art of Craft which is um, my online store. Um, they, I've, I've put them in two different ways. One I've faced this way, one I've faced that way. Um, the use here is much the same. I've put in um, trees behind a pine and then just a, um, a, an old tree with one of Tim Holtz dies and I've decorated them up. Some of the things that I see people don't do is they don't put images in behind. Uh, that I put curtains and, and doors and dress it up a little and that's so much fun and it gives it a lot more depth and dimension when you put it on your t tags and your cards and on your layouts. To be completely different, um, this one is a scene from one of the mini books that I'm doing, the Once Upon a Springtime Graphic 45 paper that I'm doing for one of my granddaughters and you can see I've used that on the edge fence die here and I'll show you uh, a few tricks with using that and uh, the house is back here I've dimensionalized the house a little I've actually cut this one out of um, product called Tyvek but you can cut it out of anything and I've used metal on the roof line and um, on the doors and I've used um, paper for the area of the windows and again you can see inside you probably won't be able to see it but it's actually got a lamp in there um, and this one has got dolls and bits and pieces in there to, to make the house come alive the house looked quite flat until I put the frame on it I kind of like putting the frame on it and so we'll discuss how we, we do that as for the scenes in the background I'm going to be doing um, videos on how to create those or how I create those and um, also about the different fussy cutting and what have you um, because with fussy cutting I think a lot of people cut them out of paper but they don't back them with grunge board uh, or grunge paper which gives them lots of strength which means when you, the children play with them and 
um, people look at them they're not going to get tatty so do consider doing all that just stick the paper down onto your grunge paper and cut around it it's fine it works great so let me show you what you get with the, the when you cut out the die you get one of one of these depending on how many you want to cut out of course um, there are two pieces that come out here that I call a door I don't know that it is but that's what I call it and I keep those and you'll see what I do with those later um, I also um, will get an extra piece of paper and I'll back it with a, some uh, this is just an extra piece of paper it's a bit of coordinations paper and even though that, this has got a pattern on it when you cut the frame out you don't see that pattern you just see it looks like paints come off it looks kind of cool and I have Humongo tape, which comes, it's a, a part of the tape that comes with the 10 second studio's metal range. And I use this all the time when I want a strong fix. And I have scraps left over, so I use them for my embellishments and um, it's fabulous stuff. But so, to get back to the point, when I'm cutting out these windows, um, I will just get a square, back it with some of this, and just cut out that area. I do that so that it can be backed with the sticky um, a sticky surface so that when it comes to the time to, for me to put it down on there it's just a simple process. Now you might not want to go to that trouble you might just want to stick it down with some um, glue or some glossy accents that's fine but it's just something I like to do. I'm also going to create a scene for you when I'm making um, this, do, using this particular die, and um, a part of that scene uh, will be this little little girl here, um, and I'll just show you how I paint it and what I do to put in into it because I'm going to be making the beach scene. Um, I want you to remember also that you can create all sorts of backgrounds like these um, to go in behind your houses as you do them and that looks fabulous as well um, just to go back to this one here on the, the texture on this one you can use so many of the different folders this one is actually um, let me think it's a postcard and sheet music texture fade from Tim Holtz so that just goes to show you I mean it's brilliant to do this sort of texture to make it look like a house another favorite of mine is well, I actually have several, and you'll probably see me create with them through um, uh, through the video. Uh, back to one of my old favourites that you saw me use on the last video, and that's a collage and notebook texture fade, which I've used on this. Makes it simple. Um, on this particular one, I have um, <laughs> I've actually used distress uh, embossing powders and um, crackle on the roof and distress crackle uh, distress embossing powders up there as well um, great just play with it and do what you will um, you can find all your bits and pieces and make it up um, I often cut out the die and then I make um, I, I actually cut the roofs off um, so I can chop and change them you can see here where I've got several different techniques that I've used on the roof. Some of them aren't finished yet. Um, again, that looks like the... Um, oh, which die is that? That looks like... Oh, it's the, it's the um, note card again from his texture fades. This is another favourite one of mine. Um, I love these texture fades. Uh, the Matrix, Matrix and Gridlock. They have some fabulous, it has fabulous detail to it. And I just enjoy playing with it and using it in a lot of my uh, layouts and mini albums. And this is the Gridlock one, giving you another effect again on metal. Uh, metal's cool to use. Um, the one I'm, I'm probably going to use this for my beach house. And I've actually used some Muti on there, but in behind there, uh, some of Tim Hill's paper again. It, um, it's that uh, collage notebook texture fades in behind there and sometimes I, depending on the orientation I mean 
I do both sides and see which one I like the best. But I kind of like this one, so I think I'll use that one today. And same with your um, houses. Uh, when you cut them out, this one's been cut out of metal, and I've already put the sticky tape on the back, the humongo tape. Um, and this one, I have actually used the um, bricked, come, um, comes from the texture fade set, uh, bricked and wood grain. And again, this one, it comes up quite nice, but I'll probably go over that again, add a bit of acrylic paint, use a bit of this and that on it. And more paper from... Um, range. Uh, this is from his uh, retro stack and uh, I've, you can see I've got different textures on there. This is one side and it's got this, I've got this lovely wood grainy effect on the back. If you don't like the whole the whole retro thing going on all the all the papers have got this cool wood grain effect on the back. They're just, they're just really nice. I like that. I like to play with that a lot. Um, I have these colour charts that I've downloaded from the Ranger site where I have put my thumbprint on them in all the different inks. It just helps me decide what I'm going to use on each project. I've got my Distress inks, my Adirant, Rondac inks, my Dabbers, uh, my Stickles, my per Liquid Pearls, my Distress Stickles and um, the Perfect Pearl Mists. And it really helps me when I am working on a project. Put some of my uh, Ranger Wonder tape on the back here. And we'll have the usual problem that I always have with no fingernails of getting it off. Got a few other windows cut here. I also cut the packaging out. Um, if I want to have a reflect in the window, um, I'll put a little bit of alcohol ink on behind there, just so that you're not looking through. Because if you put this on your scene, it, it looks really strange if you haven't got something in behind. It looks like a cutout, and you want to make it appear um, like a house. So I either put um, these the clear packaging in behind like I said um, for this one I would have probably used like gold alcohol ink because pretending it's a nice sunny day to get that reflect or a blue to reflect the sky or silver so that you couldn't see through there at all but in this case I'm actually going to use um, a little scrap of paper I often use all the different crafty secret creative scraps and their um, their little their notepads, their journaling notepads like this journal notes, images and journal notes and they have all sorts of little scenes on them um, and I just really like to cut those out and put them in behind there you don't even have to know what it is, it's more to reflect that there is something inside the house I also like um, to put some curtains at the window. Um, the way I do that is I put some of the Ranger Wonder tape onto any lace, ribbon, however, uh, whatever I'm trying to create uh, on this particular one. You can see I put lace in behind here and lace in up the top here with those little dolls and things up in this house in this house because it's um, a fairy book for a little girl. Um,
chosen out these um, in the Adir Adirondack range um, the lemonade for the sun um, the sand all to mimic the middle of the picture which might look like sand and a little bit of this willow at the bottom to um, reflect that it's at ground level um, and we'll see how they turn out Set that I am going to use. It's a Crafty Secrets set. It's it's really sweet. Um, I've only got a couple of them left. It's, this one's it's called Seaside, and um, I like to use these little birds because it really sets the scene for the sea. And I like to use the little girl in it. I've already stamped them on here. Um, on this side, I've put a few of them. Around, I will go back and I'll highlight um, the bird where you can see through it because you can see through to the background and I'll just put a little bit of probably in that white enamel accent on it because it'll really make it shine out and look like the sun's reflecting off the feathers. And for the little girl, this is how I do her. I've stamped her onto some scrap manila cardstock because it really takes the wet. Um, here she is here. Um, I do like to do two of them and then pick out the best one, cut the hat out and dimensionalise it as with this one. So that it actually um, sits up a bit and uh, has that dimension. Oh, and these um, water brushes, these are, these are the Koi water brushes, they're fabulous. They're, they're really thin, fine, beautiful um, brush to use. Uh, don't deliver too much water. I prefer using just um, a brush so I'll actually leave one of these uh, with no water in it and the other one is actually filled with a dove blending medium. I like this stuff, I really do. It's um, when you feel it, it feels, it's got kind of a, a greasy feel but um, it's great with chalks, it'll set your chalks so you can mix up and paint with the chalk colours. I just like the way it moves um, the inks and the products around and sometimes I'll even uh, just put it on over top of the image uh, before I've, I start to um, colour it in and just put it all over the bits that you're going to be blending. Both of these have been painted with um, distressings and I'm going to do the same with this. I, always, I use this almost like a blending pen because sometimes when I go over the edges I can push the ink around and push it back where I want it to if you're familiar with using um, Copics. I've actually stamped these images in archival ink. If you're going to be using your Copic pens, you're obviously going to be using Memento ink and a, um, a card that will take out.
we have some glossy accent and some crackle accents. I like to put um, crackle accents on her little outfit and I like to put glossy accent on the dome of the hat and just fill it up. 